I, 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 uh, I put my, I put my plastic into it, but, uh, we're live. Oh, we're live. Oh my God. <laughs> put my plastic into it. <laughs> <laughs> what does it even mean? XR Talk with Paul and Spencer. Hey everybody. Hey guys. I, it's so good to see so many fun names in the chat and, uh, and yeah, it's kind of a, it's a little wintry in Portland. You can see from Spencer's yard view. It's a little chilly. Mm -hmm. It's a little, little dreary. <laughs> and we don't have a guest this week for the first time in a long time. But I think I love having the guests um, because it's, we've had such interesting people on, but I do like talking about like current events and everything and we don't really get a chance to do that with a guest as much. I don't feel like, so yeah. we're kind of taking it back. We're taking it back to the old yeah. school and yeah, I think maybe, I, maybe we should balance this out. Maybe we'll do plus it is kind of hard to coordinate a guest every week and like prep them and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we kind of did this one last minute. We actually, <laughs> Spencer it just signed out yeah, a few minutes I before. Almost, I almost missed this mm -hmm. uh, because usually we're, we're like, you know, a half an hour beforehand, we meet them in the kind of our green room area and we talk to them and stuff and kind of, you know, everyone gets ready for it. And then we go live at four and Paul's like, uh, are you going to make it? <laughs> it like, at five know, till. Like... <laughs> so yeah, so like, you get, all right, shit. Sorry, you guys are getting a little bit of our warm-up uh, banter and, uh, that we normally get out of the way. But we don't have a yeah. guest to reveal, so that's good. We're not hiding anyone behind the third screen. Um, or, okay. are, or are we? No, just kidding. <laughs> We've done... I'll just stay there the entire time. <laughs> yeah. just kind of you just hear their, their, lip, their lip smacks and laughs and stuff. You hear them, hear them breathe every once in a while. Right? So I do... I got a whole bunch of... We got a whole bunch of new stuff... Like I, I lined up a whole bunch of stuff to talk about because we haven't really, there, there's been a lot of good news in the past couple of weeks. And then, um, I didn't even really think about the fact that, um, I've got a bit of news of my own that, uh, was going to go, go live today. So, so that's how, that's how coordinated I am. Um, so I would imagine most of the people in the chat, um, have, heard in the discord or maybe on Twitter. Cause look, most of you guys are friends of ours, uh, about our announcement today for torch, my company, um, that I, that I co-founded with Josh Faust and Tony Falco, um, that we're going to be discontinuing, uh, the service. Um, and you know, it, the, there, there's a whole lot I could, I could say about it. I mean, I think, um, First and foremost, um, I am super thankful for the team we put together. Like, uh, you got to keep in mind, we started working on this in 2017. We got funding in 20, we started working on this in 2017. And then uh, we shipped a, a public product in 2018 and just kept working on it. And to have such talented people join, I was just really proud of the team and, and what we built. Um, so a huge shout out and thank you to everyone. Um, you know, just, just so everyone knows that, you know, we were kind of, we kind of saw in 2019 that the market was not developing as quickly as we thought. Actually, let me, let me rewind it a little bit. Like we, you got to remember when we were at Magic Leap from 2014 well into 2016, almost three years, we were watching people start to get into 3D computing and seeing and seeing the difficulty and the opportunity. And, and I saw the opportunity in that difficulty. And we, I was kind of calculating like, okay, at the time, now I can really talk about some of this stuff now, but like at the time in 2016, we were supposed to ship the first Magic Leap product in late 2016. I knew that was not going to happen, but I thought it would maybe happen in 2017. So I knew that that was happening. We were seeing VR develop. We like uh, the DK. We were seeing the DK2 come out. We were starting to see the the Vive had come out at that time. So I was trying to time the market, and I knew what we wanted to build was going to take time. 
And so that that was kind of what I was looking at. Was well, I at least know the Magic Leap will be out there in in twenty seventeen ish time frame, and we knew VR was starting to pick up steam, and so we knew we had. I knew I wanted to get going, um, and and so in my world, people are already having these problems. Like you know, in the in the Magic Leap world, we were solving. Uh, yeah. we, we were we were taking on problems that we'd already seen, and then when I got out of Magic Leap and and you know Josh and I started talking about the the solution that we wanted to build around this problem, and then when Tony joined us, like well let's de- let's let's define the problem too. Cause, well, I mean the problem the problem was that you had you know uh, artists and UI developers and UX people um, uh, and 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 folks who didn't have a lot of code skills who had really great ideas for how it should look and how it should interact and stuff. And the process was to go and get the dev to code it for you. And then kind of like back and forth and back and forth, like we do, like we're doing now, or like you and I are doing, but we have, you know, uh, 55 years of experience between the two of us. And, uh, and it's a lot easier for us, but people just getting into it, it was this, this monumental mountain of, uh, of, of, of knowledge that you had to gain in order to get something onto, you know, into AR and then to iterate. Yeah. And, know, and, and, and yeah. And, or, you know, at a higher level, oh my God, 3d is not just for video games anymore. There's a whole lot of people that don't know all these crazy little tricks we know from video game and, and doing this early stuff. And so, right. and, but yeah, that was the specific problem space we were focused on. And then, when we started trying to validate it, I mean, you know, we went around and we talked, we talked to some really big companies that were really investing and still are investing in, in this future. And they were validating, Oh, that's yeah, we definitely have that problem. And we're definitely going to want more people building 3d applications. So, you know, we worked with the data we had in the moment and we tried to time it at the same time while we were, we, we, we built out our first kind of swing at it as a proof of concept and we, it was actually VR based. And, um, and, and so it was basically the torch idea, this visual building of 3d interactive prototypes and, and things, um, was VR based to start. And we were testing that. And so this was 2017 and we were getting a lot of validation. But, you know, obviously things have not panned out. So, you know, the, I've learned a ton of stuff. You know, the, the, I've learned a lot about product development and, and product validation. But at the time, given that we knew that the market was not, like, turned on yet, we were like, this feels like it's, it's about to activate. So we've got to, like, you know, get set in the blocks for it, right? Then ARKit got announced. And we're like, okay, this is like Apple validating everything that we um, know to be unfolding. And now here's Apple kind of throwing their hat in the ring, right? And so it was even more validation. So that was real, like at the time, based on the information we had and the background that we had, it felt like, okay, if this thing blows up, if, if the AR market unfolds in 2018 or the 2019 timeframe, we got to get to work now. We got to do this now. And we got to establish like, you know, we got to, we got to, we got to be iterating before that happens. If we really want to be in a position to like do that. And and that's what we did. And, and, you know, we, we, we timed it the best we could. And, um, it just still has honestly has not hit the level of scale that it, uh, right. There's not enough people with this problem yet. Right. And I think that the, the other companies that like the bigger companies that have gotten into the in, in, into that space have enough money to throw, a, you know, a, a 50 person team at the problem and just continue to, you know, to, to iterate while it becomes something they can afford to wait. Needs. Yeah, they can afford to wait. So and you guys had what you like seven, eight people, 12. 12, 12, 12, 12 at full tilt were 12 people. And, um, and yeah. And so we, and so in 2019, we like, we were, that's when we started like trying to zero in on, um, you know, what are people valuing out of everything we're doing? So, 
you know, so that's when we, you know, we, we, we actually, what we rolled out were uh, almost like experiments where we tested like how, you know, we were watching the social media, the Instagram and the, and the spark AR side develop and the Snapchat side develop. Like, what if we connected with that? Is that interesting to people? And we put something and we got a little bit of interest. And honestly, the strongest signal we got in 2019 was people were really excited about web AR. And, um, and so we, you know, we, we pushed in that direction, but we were all and you know, credit goes to Tony, um, for always for like, for the first part of 2019, he was already like, things are, things are going to start slowing down just, you know, economically, the, like the economy, like, you know, we've been on a, in a, on a, a bull run for a long time in the market. We've got an election year coming up. Like there's all kinds of things you have to think about when you're running a company like this and you've got 12 other or you've 11 other lives that you're, you know, responsible for. So you start to think about all these things and, and we started thinking about our runway and, and cash and we started ta talking to investors and we were just starting to see that the, you know, that the, the traction that they were demanding was not matching up to the market, like what the market was providing. And so, you know, so we, we behind the scenes, we were doing lots of things, um, mostly to keep our team, like our team was just so talented. I mean, I'm like, I'll say it again. Our team was spectacular. Like the fact that we shipped, in 2018 and we were iterating we were shipping releases every two weeks for the first few months adding huge features everything's high quality like um i'm really proud of the team and the product and um and we you know we we shot our best shot and we timed it the the best that we could with the given all the factors we had to to keep in so and i i used it to pitch and sell uh two or three projects you know, just because it was, it was, it was so much easier for me to, uh, to just like very quickly build a model, put it into, into torch and then bring it to the client and go, yeah, look like this and like that. And, you know, it's like, it's a fantastic tool. It, it, yeah, it's it made just, me money. It's you know? just, just early. There's not enough of you, you know, like, I mean, right. yeah, there's not enough yeah. opportunities out there's, there's, we're just not at that scale yet. So, um, so yeah, so, so just, uh, you know, um, and, and we had a lot of, I, I see a lot of, sorry, I see a lot of people in the chat that I definitely want to recognize and like, uh, Martins and, uh, a huge supporter of ours. And I think people saw that we were, we, we, we kind of put publish out there, which was our first, like ask for money. And really once you do that as a startup, once you put a product out there and you ask money for it, you're, you're, you're basically testing the water, right? Like, is there, is there, uh, is there enough of a market here? And so, right. you know, we, 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 the, and now I have talked to a lot of peers in the industry and it's, but even the big companies, like the big companies we talked to before we even started that were validating this problem. Some of them even built solutions that further validated the problem that looked a lot like ours, you know, like, <laughs> but, or, or Apple, you know I mean? Like, but the, the thing is, is that everyone we've talked to even recently have said, yeah, we, this is not things have not unfolded as quickly as we thought that every everyone. So I, I don't think we misread. I think everyone was reading the market the same way, which is we thought, Oh, the magically, the magically did come out in 2018. And then right. we're like, you know, the, there's a couple of other companies that look promising that we're going to kind of push the, and we knew that there was going to be this transition from mobile computing to, to wearable. And, and we were all God, poised you know, for all that, but, this is the same the same thing happened with uh do you remember when i was at next space and there was a little tiny company david beach uh was involved in it with 12 uh, seconds um, 12 seconds tv yep and um and that was that was so far ahead of its time it was the and, vine and before vine it was vine before vine and before you know it was, and then it was the uh vine before tiktok and uh you know it's, it's like or instagram Right. I mean, like it, there are these little tiny snippets of video and uh, and they they were just too early. And it kind it's of just, feels like I mean, timing, know, you, you, timing and market. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this is why Apple and by the way, the this is why Apple is never first to market. They wait. For, they can afford to. First of all, it's got to be big enough for them to like really so they can continue to do these like investments into the space 
without any pressure to like ship glasses right. into the space. They don't have to. So, so we, but when you're a little company and you're like, you're, you're in that rock in a hard place of like, well, we've got to raise investment and you've got a lot of, and honestly, there's a lot of investors that had invested heavy in the space in the 2016 timeframe who weren't all their other companies were also struggling to get like, find that product market fit or that traction. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, if, if we would have been right, we'd have been old. I think we're still right. We're just the wrong time. Um, yeah. and you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, but, but I'm really proud of, I've learned a ton about myself and business and startups and product management. I really love product management and product development. Um, I learned a lot about a, a lot of things, a lot of hard, good lessons. Um, but you know, it's, it, it, well, you know what, actually, Paul, there's something really cool about this. Um, uh, here's, here's, here's the, here's the silver lining. Uh, the silver lining is that um, by uh, um, by by this n- unfortunately not working out, you and I actually have more work. Well, I mean that's the, so yeah, like I mean so yeah so so we so, so we have always been kind of em- employee first or team first, and so we've always paid really well, gave really great benefits because we wanted really senior people. And one of the things we always wanted to do was be transparent and involve our team and what's going on. Cause I've seen so many companies and so many startups like screw that up. And so our team actually, so the big focus for me for the last half of 2019 and, and, and Tony and Josh, the co-founder, like we all, we all were just trying to find a, we, we, we were seeing the, we were seeing these factors come into play. And the, by the way, this is pre coronavirus and, you know, insanity, 2020 insanity, but we wanted to figure out a way to keep the team together and we kept the team in the loop. And, and ultimately we got to a place where if we wanted to have our, if we wanted our employees to have a nice, uh, like, uh, exit out where they could find their next thing. We kind of had to make the tough call to say, we're not going to run this into the ground. We're going to let you like, we're going to, you know, we're going to support you as much as we can. And then, and then, but you know, we've got to, we've got to keep going to see what we can do with the company. And so fortunately the team, because they're so awesome, all found jobs pretty much right away. Anyone that needed or was looking for jobs right away. And that was all early this year. We were just very quiet about it. And because the team, um, you know, got, they all got scooped up because they're awesome. And, um, and, and so once that kind of flipped over and, and the team was no longer there and we could, we could, you know, it, it was just really the founders and we were just trying our best to, um, right. figure out, you know, we're still pursuing investments, still pursuing like other opportunities and just trying to figure out how to keep things going. But, you know, in the meantime, I've been, you know, I, I, we've talked about it on the show. I've been working on projects with you. I've been dabbling in stuff and consulting and freelancing. And yeah, that's the thing that the, where, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the, the other side of this coin is, uh, the market is not yet to a point where, tons and tons of companies are like, Oh my gosh, I've got to build an AR thing every day with my existing right. team. We've got to, we've got to have this, which is, that is the market in which torch would have thrived. The market is still in this mode and it has been for the past couple of years. And I think it will be for the next couple of years of, we want to, cons- we will hire consultants or we'll spend, a, we will spend a little bit of money to have somebody build something for us. Cause we're not going to like, stake the core of our company on this stuff yet and so right we're not going to hire up an ar team we're going to hire somebody else to do something for us as a one-off to make to to do a little like float a bubble yeah you know, so yeah and see the see and the bu- the right. budgets are there and so the good news is for our typical audience of this show which is a lot of people that are freelancers and entrepreneurs and stuff there's tons of opportunities in that i just think like if you're if you're trying to build a um a product that serves the ar or xr uh, software market or like the product market, there's just not, there's just not enough there yet, but like, um, little solutions for, I I think there's all, there's still all kinds of exciting, positive opportunities in this, but, um, 
it's just, it's, you know, just keep that in mind. And yeah. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm for me, I've been working on a bunch of stuff and, um, I, I depending upon how the time goes for today, uh, we've got a couple projects that, that we've been, I've been, I've been bitching about on Twitter working on, but it's, it's, you know, it's hard stuff. And, uh, and I think we're going to do, I was thinking about doing like a, um, I, I was talking, I was catching up with Graham earlier this week. So Graham was on our show. Unfortunately, I don't remember the episode off the top of my head, but if you look back in our, um, in our playlist, this is our 20th episode. I know. I know. And it's yeah. July 1st. Holy there's some, there's probably shit. some numerology, um, cool thing about this but uh yeah see i was like i was talking to graham and uh and and i was saying like maybe we should have a project therapy episode where we just show how painful these projects can be like to work on because the stuff is still a mess it is all a mess but uh I've, i've i've been on that rant before but um i i'll save it i've i've got it in the list of stuff we could talk about but yeah, so let's, let's, well, you know, uh, one of the things that you mentioned uh, um, today when we were talking on, on Slack was uh, that you want to, like, take a uh, um, uh, take a day, you know, like maybe take Wednesdays and uh, and work on uh, on just, you know, kind of fun project ideas and 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 put aside some some time to just do the creative stuff and just kind of like, Oh, what if we did that? What if we did this? Like I was telling you about, um, uh, supernatural and wanting to do like a downhill game. And, uh, um, and you know, I, 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 I am a hundred percent on board with that. I will take off a whole Wednesday to, um, to, to mess around, the, you know, the AR or VR or, you know, whatever. So the funny, the funny thing about that is, so a lot, I don't know. I don't know if we've talked about this. I'm totally self-taught. So like I taught myself in like my uh, late teen. Well, I'd always I'd always written some sort of code even as a little kid. But like I started getting serious about it in like my late teens, early twenties, and I'm I'm self taught, and and that was all driven by going to Barnes and Noble tech book section, buying a book. And doing my own projects, like do, making up projects. Getting the O'Reilly manual. Yeah, but like I never wanted to do the, uh, I never wanted to do the like step by step build this app that that the book is. I would like take bits and pieces and be like, well, I I kind of want to make up my own thing and build it. And right. that's that's how I learned everything really. And um, the weird part is, is now that I've been like a professional for, uh, I don't know, fifteen years, I'm always like I get ideas. And then I'm like, yeah, but I could be working on a real project, like a shipping product project, you know, like uh, right. it's tough. It's tough to, it's tough to carve out that time to be like, I'm going to make a dumb little experiment. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So, so yeah, I think I got to get back to that. I think I got to be like, look, I'm going to try to make this thing today. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And like, my problem is, is I immediately go into product person mode where I'm like, oh, well, how is how are people going to use this? How is it going to ship? Like, is this going to scale? Like, well, see, that's the wonderful thing about being an artist is that <laughs> I can do stuff that, that nobody ever has to do anything with. They can just look at it and either like it or not. You know. I know. I know. Sorry, Chad. I've been totally rambling and, and ignoring you, but um, uh, anyway, we, we got lots of love. Here's, lots of love. Here's the, here's the torch 3D. Yes, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to to this this guy. So Josh and Spencer got me one of my favorite. This is a high gravity beer out of Colorado. It's Tweak. It's a it's a stout uh, with coffee added, aged in bourbon barrels. It's sixteen percent. So this is like <laughs> this is like two glasses That's... of wine in one bottle. And uh, I'm gonna crack it. I didn't crack it. I didn't crack it at the start of the show because I wanted to be present. Also, I just realized since we don't have a guest. If one of us has to go to the restroom, one of us has got a monologue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Shit. I should have saved. I should have saved the torch story for when you had to go to the potty. But anyway, (laughs) yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And by, and and we just made this announcement, um, a couple hours ago and I've, I've already had tons and tons of people so supportive, reach out and, you know, giving us props and, um, thank you so much. I've, I've been kind of, um, this has been a very long, 
uh, processing for me. And, and it's something like I, I kind of explained, like even in 2019, we're thinking about all the different ways this could go. So I'm in a good place. I'm working on fun stuff, hard stuff with Spencer. I got all kinds of ideas. Um, Torch may still have a little bit of, uh, of stuff ahead for it, but we just felt like, just like with the, the employees and the team, we felt like we did have, we, I mean, we did have quite a few active users and we did have paying customers and we felt like we needed to let them know as soon as we reasonably could that no matter which way torch goes in the, you know, in the next few months, it doesn't look like there's going to be a way that it just, the stir, the service stays intact as is. And so we just want to give everyone a heads up. So we had, we kind of had to like break the news to like, just, just make sure everyone knew. And by the way, we like, uh, Josh put in the work to like, everyone can download their projects. You can download all the assets. It's downloadable to a file that can be processed. And, um, you know, we just wanted to, we just want to treat everyone well. If we do nothing else, we want to build great products, have an amazing team, treat everyone well. Sometimes it's not an amazing business, uh, comes out of it, but at least we did that. Um, so yeah, so I'm good. Thank you. But thank you so much for everyone that's checked in already. I'm going to try to reply. I've been trying to reply to people. Um, I'm, ex- I'm still excited. I just think, I think the market, it, you know, we got to be brutally honest. If we really believe in XR as the future of computing, um, we've got to be real brutally honest about like, what are the reasonable expectations of consumer? What's really going on? Where's the value really being uncovered? And so that means sometimes you can't always be a cheerleader and you can't all, you know, I got, and I got, I got to tell you the, the stuff that we're, that, that we're, we're, uh, um, you know, our clients are asking for it right now are still 360 videos. It's not mind blowing stuff. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, they're still like, yeah, you know, this is amazing. This 360, you know, you can look around and which is all, you know, it, it is, it's amazing. It's cool looking, but, it's you know all of the the the, the stuff that that I'm seeing like using the uh, um uh, using the iPad sensor and using the lidar and like picking up all of, you know and like all of these really really cool features nobody wants that right well now and because they don't even know they don't even know it exists and they e- don't know how to use it even right? if they did the 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 the, the that hardware is not going to be like again like uh, and i probably right? yeah like you got to you got to think from a real product perspective it like for this to really be something a lot of people know about and use every day it hits consumer scale and for it to hit consumer scale there's this low common denominator of of ubiquity uh, of like availability and uh, dude this is this is this is the the um the pain of realizing that deer hunter um, made more money than your game you spent like two years yeah. working on. You know? Dude. <laughs> look, it, look, okay. I mean, this is, this is a business lesson regardless of, um, by the way, irregardless, I learned today is an official word in the dictionary now. No, no, no. It's dis irregardless. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but regardless of XR and 3d, um, like if you want to make a bunch of money, you don't, you don't create something completely original from scratch like that's the riskiest like you like right. you you hit the you hit the like lowbrow lowest common denominator set of parameters and uh yeah. And, yeah i mean you still get lucky to some degree but like uh the market does not always reward innovation <laughs> In fact, right. it, I th- in fact, it may punish it most of the time. By the way, the whole a, a whole ton of the Torch teams in the chat, and that's so awesome. I, Brian's in here, who's never here. Um, Nathan, uh, uh, so awesome. Cammy, I see you. This is the romper room, magic mirror time. I see you. I see you, Izzy. Um, oh my God! I, I did one of the one of the uh, um, uh, one of the comments from David, who was uh, I think my first employee ever. Uh, um, says. So you're saying that Deer Hunter VR would make a mint? Actually, you know what? <laughs> it probably would. It did. It did. It did not make my news agenda today, but it was real close. That um, Carol Baskin from the the Tiger Netflix thing is coming out with a right. VR experience. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, it's a tiger. It's and a, that will make 
and that'll make a million it'll make millions of dollars. It, it will not make it will not make Beat Saber money, but it will make more than seventy five percent of the really good VR apps. <laughs> okay, so so I'm I'm, I'm kind of like uh, riffing on that. Beat Saber was one of those uh, um, uh, kind of unique. Uh, well put together little pieces that, that wasn't pandering to the lowest common denominator. They happened to get out early and made a deal, I guess, with Oculus uh, to get out to be one of the first things, right? But like that's a great example of uh, doing something that is not kind of lowest common denominator. Or I, I think it is. I think it's a very simple premise. It's like they took a little bit of... Um, Space Pirate Trainer, a little bit of Fruit Ninja, and mm-hmm. a little bit of the rhythm game genre. They, those are all validated, proven markets, and they they mm-hmm. took they took just the right bits and they optimized it for the you know I yeah I mean actually Beat okay, Saber is yeah, a no, great example. And, and actually, you did something really cool the other day in one of our team meetings where you were like, "Well, we're making this game. Let's go look at all the other successful game." Uh, like endless, we're making an endless game right now. We're making a, um, a, a basically an endless runner where you climb a tree. And, uh, um, you know, you said, yeah, well, let's look at all, you know, why do you have checkpoints? And you, you, you researched a bunch of stuff about game di- uh, dynamics that, and that, that, that actually really, really worked in the past. And why did they work? And, uh, um, so that makes sense. You know, uh, they, I mean, took a little bit from here, a little bit from there. I mean, back to know? the. I mean, one thing I learned from. I will. I will say that Torch. Um, credit a lot of credit to Tara Hatfield. I don't think she's in the chat, unfortunately. But like Tara and Keith, the design side, who I worked really closely with, we had to like we we had no basis of comparison or starting point. We had to like we took a lot of risk and we made up a lot of stuff. And then when we saw other companies like incorporating that, we're like, Oh wow. You know, like it, it, it's nice. It's almost nice to be copied in some, to some degree. Um, but like I have learned a ton about like looking at what works, like don't throw away what works. Don't let, don't get sucked into the trap of, well, that's already been done. You should be like, Oh, that's already been done. And, people like it (laughs) because like, and and it's also like, it's also from a a user experience perspective, it's familiar. So you can lean on that, you know, as like, uh, like David actually, you know, yeah. Guitar hero was, or no, sorry. It was Eric, um, in the chat. Yeah. Like beat saber is an, um, you know, like a, a, a little nice crisp mixture of a few proven elements, you know, like, so, so I would say that to, you know, again, like thinking about our usual crew that we talk to in our community here at XR talk that, um, that are trying to figure out new things to work on. You don't have to build everything from that's ne- In fact, I would encourage you to not build everything that's never been seen before and innovate like every little thing, right. take something that is like proven and figure out how you can rework it to what you're wanting to work on. Um, like always, you know, use that. Don't, don't, don't burn your time on the parts that other people have already figured out. Um, but it is so tempting. I get it too, because it's so tempting. Cause you're like, Oh, it'd be so cool if I was the person that like, you know, rolled out this, rolled out the thing that people copied. But, um, right. I'm here to tell you from experience, uh, uh, the, the old, the old startup adage, I think it's a startup adage. Maybe this is no, maybe this is not startup. The old adage is, you know, pioneers have arrows in their backs and, uh, and, right. and settlers settle. And, uh, and yeah. so, so, you know, that is the danger when you try to go a little bit, we were trying to go ahead of the curve just enough that we thought the curve was right behind us. But if you go too far ahead of the curve, um, people will just sit there and watch you to see if you walk off the edge or the, you know, they'll just follow your footsteps. So, right right you know it is it is uh it 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 it's the it is, you know i talked about i tweeted about this actually a couple of days ago you know the 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 one of the paradoxes of working in this space and working in xr is that it's so exciting because it's so untouched and so like unmolested by 
you know, advertising and like all the bad patterns we see in right because current comp- money. Yet. Yeah, because it's not big right. enough yet. All right. all we do is talk about how can we make it bi- that big? Like how can we get it to the to that scale? Right. Because that's when how it can becomes we make it sleazy, Paul. <laughs> well, not how can we, not how not how can we make it sleazy? How can we make it like widespread? How can we make it large scale? Which right in whenever you hit that scale, there will be opportunists and there will be like, you know, it's just going to happen. And so it's like, on one hand, you're like, Oh, nobody's ever done this in VR. Nobody's ever done this in AR. And you got to be like, well, is there a reason for that? Uh, No, no, there's just not a, and and it's such a slippery slope. So like, I I feel people that are like wanting to do that stuff. So I, I, I just recently started playing, uh, um, uh, um, uh, Supernatural with the bats and the things, and uh, it's called. Uh, we had Shanna on Supernatural. Supernatural. There we go. <laughs> I just started. I just recently started playing that. I played the. Uh, you know, yesterday morning I had a workout. This morning I did had a workout, and um, it's freaking fantastic. It's really cool. Once you get past the whole, like I, I've always had a hard time going to like a, a gym and doing a, a, a jazzer size or dancer size workout kind of thing with a instructor. Cause I'm kind of, I don't know. I, my, my, my workouts have always been, uh, um, wait a minute, skates, wait a minute. Bicycles. What? Are you trying to tell me that you're not into like a structured program where you go to a place and you focus on working out in hey, one, in one task in a box, man? Like, <laughs> are you saying that are you saying that structure doesn't work for you that discipline doesn't work for you i'm shocked well, i don't know what shocked do think, Paul? <laughs> i would so, hold but that's the that was the slap the kiss on the cheek is you've sat in one place for a very long time today for our show thank you i have right yeah, i haven't really you. moved i thank mean you. i moved a little bit but i brought the i brought the bottle with me so <laughs> right, i have it here right. so. sorry 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 um, yeah, so you you don't anyway. like the gym so, so I don't really like the gym. I don't like, you know, being with other people when I'm working. I actually per- prefer like getting on a bicycle or on roller skates or a skateboard and, and, and going out into the world and kind of, you know, driving around it and, and exploring it or running or walking or whatever. And, uh, um, and so I'm playing this, uh, this game and uh, workout experience, whatever you call it. And, uh, and, and it's, it's, uh, um, I'm realizing that one of the, like my formative moments when I was a kid, when I was in, you know, like 18, 19 years old is, uh, actually from the age of like 15 to about 20, uh, when I joined the Navy, um, I was a downhill roller skater and I would get on skates and I would do downhills with the skateboarders and we would do 60, 70 miles an hour. And I, you know, I'm like, we, we, it was, and it was terrifying and also really, really a great workout because you're, you're crouched down and you're, you know, you're, right. you're in this, in this inline kind of, kind of, you know, uh, space. And, uh, and I thought, well, what if we did that for VR? What if we did a downhill skiing, uh, roller skating, skateboarding, snowboarding, uh, thing. And, and and the, the 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 thing that keeps coming back to me is the vomitron, right? Mm-hmm. Is that we're gonna we're gonna make everyone puke on their TV? Uh, so that's side. why I don't know if it's gonna work or not. Well, that, so that's exactly why this all ties into what I was just saying. Because when you told me about this idea earlier, my initial reply was, you should proto you should prototype out the core mechanic first. Because here's my right. and by the way, I was more talking to myself because I have I I have been. I've been thinking about this a lot lately because here's my problem as somebody that like wants to be an entrepreneur and like considers himself product oriented. I'm already thinking of like, what am I going to brand the experience? I'm going to search for domain names. And then I'm going to say like, well, how could I do, <laughs> What's my logo gonna look how like? could I do oh my God. downloadable oh, content? Okay. How can we update it? Like I'm already assuming that the, the idea is going to work and I'm already like, I think it was deploying at scale. 2016 or 2017 when I came out to your house and you were at the kitchen table, uh, in, in AI and uh, Adobe illustrator working on the torch logo. And oh my God, you had like a hundred different mm. versions of that thing. If was, Tony and jo- if Tony and Josh are still in the chat, we should probably I could 
I could do a time lapse of uh, I coming up with the torch, coming up with the torch name. So originally, when I left Magic Leap, I left Magic Leap and I immediately went to Augmented World Expo. And I, I wanted to have like a shingle. Like I didn't want to just be Paul from Magic Leap. So I had, um, I come, I used Vertex Labs and I was like, oh, Vertex Labs will be my, like, my but name. But you have that. My you name plate. domain, right? Yeah, yeah. And of course. Oh, I would never, I would never announce a, a brand without a, a domain name or, and all, and all the social profiles reserved, right? This is my problem. Right. And so, uh, <laughs> and then once we, once we were getting serious, it was like, we can't, we can't do Vertex Labs too long. You know, Josh and Tony were very kind and they were like, you know, that, that's not going to fly. And, and also I had, um, I had, I had branded it before we'd formed a, a corporate entity. So we had, that was another motivation. So to be clean about it. And so I basically, to get the torch name itself, I probably locked myself in the house and only focused on that for a few days. I was, I like, I, I went, I maybe have a field note somewhere that has like all the, ideas. I was searching like alternative languages. Like what is this in Esperanto? And like, like I was like, you know, <laughs> ridiculous, just ridiculous. Esperanto? Oh God. Yes. Ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. This is the stuff I do instead of instead. And this is me talking to myself <laughs> instead of actually saying like, let's focus on the work. Let's focus on like making sure this is a good idea before we brand it and plan the like go to market. Like let's talk about right. if it's actually marketable and, um, or, right. or, or if there's a market for it. Well, but that part's fun too, though. I love you know it. I, mean? like, like I that, love it. Yeah. Right. But it, it's just being, well, well, I found my love and that is one thing with Torch. Like I really, I had never really called myself a product person. And I think it was because I came from full-time software development. I think when I, when I, when I got to Magic Leap and I saw the opportunity to package up the SDK into something that, that, brings value to people and you have to support them and like you have to like think about their experience using it that's where i really i it all of a sudden it clicked like my my old graphic design background my old software background it all kind of came together it's what i used to think about making video games when i got into video games i was like oh well it's it's creative and it's technical and that's why which is true but like i i also found that i was never I, i've always been a decent like game engineer game coder but i'm never going to be like the person that i'm never going to be carmack right i'm never going to be the person that i'm never going to be josh faust like i'm never going to be the one that like optimizes like every little th like and just like i i'm i'm effective i'm good enough but but that's not really my strong suit and i really found with product and which i think is true i think in general this idea of being a product person um having both an understanding of the technical and creative challenges, but also how, how do you package that up? How do people use it? And so I really, right. Torch really helped me discover that, that I really do have an interest in that. And so I don't want to, I don't want to well, squash I those tendencies, but I also want to, I want to apply those. I want to apply those um, to things that are worth it. Well, I think that, that, that shows also in your, um, like, like when we were talking to Bob Berkfile and, and you were, uh, talking about how he, all of his demos are with music in the background and they've got like a fade in and a fade out and they're like really, really well produced things. Yeah. You know, you appreciate that, that, that level of, Hey, this is what we do. And this is, you know, and, and, and here you go and enjoy that. And it's actually enjoyable. It's something, that but you know, you, but it's, we, know. I appreciate it, but I don't, I admire his ability to like naturally do that. So like, I recognize it and I recognize how important I value well, it, but I'm not, it the, I, I'm not the one. For Bob. It seems effortless for Bob, but Bob, you have to remember sleeps, I think three day, three hours a day. Uh, um, so like, yeah. you know, like well, Bob's he's, just insane. He, he doesn't have blood. It's Mountain Dew, Mountain Dew game fuel or whatever <laughs> for his blood. Well, I've, we've been ignoring the chat a little bit. Like, um, the thing, so many kind words and yes, Tara and Keith, I mentioned them or excuse me. I'm drinking. I have switched over to the, um, the 16% tweak by Avery brewing in case you're curious. Um, you proof. Uh, 16% man. Um, Yes, Tara Hatfield, Keith Hamilton, 
Um, you'll see a lot of blog posts and videos from them. Cami, if you go to the Torch YouTube, like, and, and Tony put a bunch of work into the Torch YouTube. Um, Nathan is in here, like all the content marketing, um, so many, so many good things. But yeah, Keith did a talk at AWE where, I mean, like you'll, if you watch that talk, you'll, you'll see like we were, we were working on problems that I, I don't think, I think people are having today and have had in the past. I don't think enough people right. are having it yet. And I think, I think you will, I hope we keep, I hope we're able to keep some of the content we created because I think. I think we've created some reference that'll be valuable a couple of years from now, honestly. Um, yeah. You know, so, so yeah. So let's see. Let, I want to, I want to, I want to make sure we're not uh, <laughs> ignoring the chat. Yeah. Josh, Josh, uh, the, I've got a, I still got a meme somewhere I made of uh, when we were still at magic leap where um, an hour before a big demo, actually, I think it was Neil Stevenson was coming in for one of his first demos. Uh, Josh uh, improved the frame rate of one of our demos by an order of magnitude through <laughs> black magic that I'll not, him and I know what, know what he did, but I won't reveal it publicly, but I made a meme about him talking trash, talking Michael Uprash Cause, uh, cause it was really funny. Cause it was basically the, the demo was, well, didn't we call him Josh Abrash? Yeah. That? that was why. Yeah. yeah. The, the, de <laughs> the demo was basically not, it was barely showable and he made it like just work and um your, your secret safe with me josh i know what you did but you get you get the credit for doing it you're the one that did it that's what matters um yeah presentation you know estella hi estella thank you so much for being such a huge supporter of ours um yeah i, I presentation matters to me and but it, it's also um it also holds me back from putting some stuff out there and so like i'm trying to figure out what's that balance between mm -hmm. like uh, you know, you know who I really admire. Um, I, I had not planned to talk about this, but um, Daniel Beauchamp from uh, Shopify, he's the one that's been doing all these hand tracking demos uh, with the. Oh my God, those are amazing! They I'm always end with a double thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. he he did a new one uh, today or yesterday of of cutting hair. Like you're, you're using your uh, you're using. I saw your, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was like uh, my 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 COVID haircut for my girlfriend. Yeah, he's he's Worked just well. He's just doing yeah. these little experiments, you know, and like he's just putting them out there. And um, another one is um, oh, I'm gonna mess up her name. Um, she puts out she put out she just released shapes for Unity the database stuff. I'm on her Discord. Ugh, oh, gonna, whoa. Uh, um, I'm going to mess it up. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to mess it up. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. she I, I'm going I'm to look it all up. I watch her Twitch stream and she's like she's constantly like when she's doing a little live experiment, which maybe that's what we should do is we should we should do these experiments live. But um, even while she's doing the live experiment, you can hear her talking out loud about, um, oh, this will make a great gift for Twitter. Like she's already thinking about how I'm going to share it. Freya, Freya Homer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, awesome. Awesome stuff. Uh, Jeff Rudiger's in here. Oh boy. Oh boy. All kinds of trouble. Uh oh, Yerg's in here. Oh, shit. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so, oh gosh, where are we? We're 50 minutes in. Um, <laughs> let's do, Amazing. let me, let me switch. And you don't up. have to pee yet. I am good. I am good. You know why? Cause I, I'm drinking, I'm drinking high proof stuff, so I'm not drinking as much actual right. liquid. Um, let's, let's do a little bit of the new stuff since I've got it queued up. Yeah, let's do it. Um, and by the way, uh, since Spencer joined five minutes before we went live, he's not heard any of any of this stuff. So he'll be your, uh, no, I, I, I'll, I'll be able to react. He'll be your you proxy. Are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so actually I'll, we'll, we'll share this stuff in the show notes. Um, so if you don't follow, follow Oscar on Twitter, um, he's, he's OS Falmer. Um, he did these really great AR demos, um, before Apple snapped him up and then Apple hired him. And so he's, he's a technology evangelist for Apple focusing on AR. And, um, he, he shared a tweet from, so WWDC was last week. So WWC is a worldwide developers conference for Apple. Um, normally it's a lottery entry. It's like, I think it's 1500 or $2,000 a ticket. It's always sold out within minutes of opening. Most people can't go to it. 
Um, and because of the lockdown and quarantine, all of WWDC was digital and virtual, which meant everyone could attend, which I wished it had been that way for years and years. So there are some bright sides to all this craziness. Um, but he's got a great Twitter thread where he summarizes all the AR kit and AR related um, uh, bits uh, from from this this year's WWDC. And there was a couple that I pulled out in particular. Um, since we're since we're kind of in the last half of the show, I won't dig into them, but there's a, there's an update on reality kit, which is a very torch like workflow with their reality composer tool. Um, but reality kits kind of their like higher level framework where, um, they want people to build actual interactive experiences. AR, think of AR kit. Like everybody just talks about AR kit. AR kits kind of like the fundamental <laughs> tech reality kits, like a little layer above it that that like is con it, i would consider it the content layer on top of ar kit reality kit um and for you spencer they have an a artist ar toolkit presentation really it's just showing you how to make usdz's um sorry oh is, really is that is that really what it is yeah i mean i think it i think it probably gets into the reality composer workflow a little bit um right advanced scene so this is what we we're talking about earlier advanced <laughs> scene understanding with lidar so they actually do a deep dive so we'll, we talked about this when apple ipad lidar was announced what does it mean from a consumer or from an experience perspective this lidar sensor thing it means that you can get tracking really fast you don't need to you could you could point it at a white wall and it'll actually pick up tracking which by the right. way if you ever try to get mobile ar to work in a all glass or all white room you'll have a lot of trouble it'll take you forever to get it initialized <laughs> like, like, like the entire development magically pay headquarters <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah glass fun, and shiny fun fun magic leap side story when they rebuilt the plant so we were we we talked we talked about the, what episode did we talk about the dakota center i can't was oh, it God. was shanna I maybe I, I think it was shanna um yeah. anyway um, when, so there was an old facility in, uh, Florida, uh, Motorola facility, uh, magically renovated it for their new he headquarters and they built the whole thing in glass and, and like polished concrete floors. It was like the worst polished concrete chrome and glass. It was like the worst for tracking area for AR, <laughs> the, the best test environment for like, uh, you know, that type of tech. But, uh, but anyway, the, so yeah, like this LIDAR stuff, it again, like you think, oh, well there's LIDAR sensors out in the wild now. Yes, there are in time of flight or you call them time of flight sensors, right? They're out in the wild but there's not enough to rely on them at a consumer scale. So like no. you could make an enterprise app and you could tell people they need LiDAR iPads to run it. That's fine. Um, but nice. if you're building an experience or you have an idea and you're like, Oh, we got to have LiDAR, the LiDAR iPads, then don't plan on shipping that at scale for a while. Right. For a long time, include in a lot of, actually a lot of this stuff, it requires an OS version, a specific OS version that's still not out yet. So like, Think about that. Like a lot of the stuff they're talking about at WWDC is only coming out with iOS 14. Is that right? And um, iOS 14 well, again, we're isn't going to roll out. To the, we're, go we're going back to that to that thing where you have, you know, the 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 uh, um, we we have to serve the lowest common denominator yes. in order to make money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well. Yeah. And you know, like, but. I get it though too because it is exciting. Like, oh, now I got lidar I can play with. What can I do with it? And that's cool. Do cool. It's like it's like that's why I like Daniel from Shopify. He's tinkering with hand tracking, and he's showing cool proofs of what hand tracking can do. He's not trying right. to say I'm rolling out a hand tracking experience. Like he is like here's little here's little prototypes. Here's little demos. Um, right. Just to inspire people or just to learn. You know, like but. That that is the if you want to turn it into a living and a product, um, that's when you got to be brutal with your stuff. Um, so Paul, can, can I send you can I send you a video and have you put it up? Yeah, absolutely. You okay. send it through me through we'll text Skype. We're, oh, you're gonna text, text it to you. That's fine. We're, we're, we're just we're we're talking about um, uh, uh, lidar scanning, 
and uh, I went to my uh, dad's place uh, um, in Bend uh, um, a couple weeks ago, <clears throat> and we stopped at this little spot that's like fully forested and everything. I was like, okay, I'm really gonna test this thing out, and uh, and I used this app called uh, I think it's called AR Scanner. It's uh, um, um, it's it's for the iPad, and it's it's built basically for the for for the um, the time of flight thing. And, uh, um, it feels, um, Oh, good. it's a video. Okay. Yeah. It's a video. Yeah. Let me there download we go. it. You got it. Let me, let that. me, let me make sure you don't put any of the other stuff I sent you up there. On, All the dirty uh, pictures on my text. I'll, uh, let's see. I can probably switch over to Stand yeah, I'm, 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 I'm testing Paul's uh, ability to. I can do be it. DJ. I can do yeah, it. Yeah, you got it. Oh, got by the by the way, I'm I'm officially becoming a full time streamer. So that's yeah, I'm getting really good at this stuff. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll stream a little bit. But so, so this was uh, a spot on uh, Highway 20, 22. I forget which one it is. It's uh, it goes over um, uh, to Bend uh, over Santium Pass. And uh, but this is the speed at which this thing freaking pulls. It's meshing too. Data. It's not a it's not a point cloud. No, no, it, it meshes your environment and it meshes it really freaking quickly, and and pretty damn accurate. So too. wait, the, was this was this the Apple sample app or this was an app you? This no, this is a guy. Um, uh, is it on the App Store? He, uh, it's on the App Store and it's called. Uh, let me see here. Burr, 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 burr. Scanning. It's called LiDAR Scanner 3D. And if you have a, um, uh, if you have a, 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 an iPad 2020 with the LiDAR on it, you go grab that one. All, the other one all grab, five of you. <laughs> right, all five of you. Uh, the other one to grab is, uh, um, and actually, uh, even without LiDAR, although they've just put it into the app is scandy pro yep um so scandy pro is run by some buddies of ours uh um down in louisiana and uh um, so they got the uh, they got the back facing lidar in they got the back facing lidar in and nice it's, uh, um it's it's it, it is also like really cool yeah so, yeah check, there's check a lot of well. companies that were like ready for this which is great you know, they were already working with the front facing depth sensor. So speaking uh-huh. of actually this is perfect segue into the other news thing was like uh, Google to not be outshined by Apple last week announced their um, AR core depth API. And so it's it's their uh, it's their 60. It's the same thing that was on Tango, right? <laughs> no, because um, yes and no. Um, it It's really their 6D equivalent there because and i actually called this note out in their blog post they say while depth sensors such as time of flight sensors are not required for the depth api to work having them will further improve the quality experiences so the cool thing maybe about they they don't doing it they're doing it in the cloud they're not doing it on the on the device i don't know but they don't require Mm -hmm. a lidar sensor or a time of flight sensor so Interesting, but they're basically doing, they've even got like the, uh, the, you know, they don't throw just balls into the scene. They mix it up with capsules and cubes, but I mean, no, it's, no, they, they, is this the one that did dreidels? <laughs> May, maybe there, there someone, someone did like dreidels, like, all, maybe. All, it was, it was, and, and it was actually kind of cool. Cause they were like spinning. Dreidels. Oh, they, I think somebody did that with the 6d kit. Um, 16. Okay. Yeah. Eric, actually, I'm going to get to that. Um, the other thing I want to call out here, though, that I think is interesting in this announcement in the AR Core Depth API announcement is they partnered up with Snap and they actually have a Lens Studio template that uses the AR Core Depth API. So, what's cool about this to me is you've got Google and Snap, and Google has Google's obviously been investing in AR, like they, they've been rolling out their AR. Um, search results and all these things but for them to do this all of a sudden the AR normally what would happen is Google announces the AR core depth API and like somebody like you Spencer I'm going to pick on you the, the artist you see that Weird. That's, that's so un, un, you see that of. 
and you send it to me and you're like, Hey, this looks cool. Can you, can we make something with this? And then, cause you're the programmer and like, wh- well, like what code can you write that can use this? So what's interesting to me is, Oh, I want a pony. Yeah. But now I can be like, dude, just download Lynn studio, open the template and make your own damn thing. Um, I did. I did. When, uh, you did this to me a year ago. And, uh, and, and I'm actually really glad that you did because I was able to like understand, uh, it, it was spark AR. I think is what I was messing with. I like spark too, but I'm, I'm interested. I'm really interested in this partnership, this kind of implied partnership between Google and snap snap has typically developed their own AR tech internally. Um, and, and I'm, I'm sure they, I'm sure they, uh, reach out to the OS level stuff when it makes the most sense performance wise and feature wise, but you don't want to talk about lowest common denominator. I mean, they have, you know, millions and millions of active users, right? So hundreds of millions. So it's interesting to me that they've put out this template that works on the AR core depth API. I don't actually know. I honestly didn't have enough time to dig into the AI or the, the, the announcement itself to know that they, um, support iOS, but, AR core did anchors that worked on iOS. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if it doesn't, if it's not out now that if you could write to the AR core depth <clears throat> API that actually works on iOS as well. Okay. I have a, um, I, I have a, a kind of dorky question from the artist side to you. Why is it that we don't have the ability to, uh, um, in web AR, to understand where the floor is and do kind of an AR kit, AR core, place something there on the floor thing. Like this is, this is something that's been bugging me for a while. Like, uh, um, uh, was it, was it, uh, um, 60 AI, uh, was it 60 AI? No, no, no. Uh, um, who was doing the web AR, uh, eighth wall, uh, right. Eighth wall. <clears throat> They were doing it, um, but they were doing it, with, you know, and, and they were the only ones. Like, why is that so hard? So eighth, for Web AR, you mean? Yeah. yeah. So Web AR um, on iOS especially uh, has no access to anything outside the browser environment. And uh, on, okay. on, on iOS, uh-huh. even, even if you use Chrome on iOS, you're really using WebKit, which is Apple's browser. Um, right, and WebKit does not allow you WebKit. To WebKit does not the... summon ARKit uh, carte blanche to to the to web code. So, and do you think that that's on purpose? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. so so and, and, and yes, and Apple's position on WebXR and AR is not yet clear. Um, for a while, it seemed like they were very anti, they wanted to push people into like building stuff with reality composer and USDZ and use quick look. Um, but there was a little bit of chatter a couple weeks ago about them working on some WebXR standards for mobile Safari and WebKit. Mm -hmm. Um, but that stuff takes so long to roll out. They're definitely the gatekeepers. Web it. Okay. WebXR slash AR on mobile is going to be completely held back depending upon what Apple decides to do. Um, so right. back, back to your question, eighth wall is only can only really access a couple of things. They can access the camera feed and a little bit of the, the IMU and gyroscope stuff. And so right. they, they look for a flat plane and they know it's flat relative to the f- device, but they don't really know Um, how far away it is. Yeah. And so, and so they don't have a sense of scale and they don't have a sense of ground. Now there's some user experience things you can do, like ask the user to place an object on the ground, like what uh, VR headsets do when you calibrate the floor, but there's just not been enough people working in web AR. Like most of the web AR eighth wall powered experiences are very marketing. Like I just wanted to load quick. I don't want to have to have them do any like calibration stuff. So, so yeah, that's why that, that, by the way, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, shout out to the Oculus team for, uh, the, the new quest, uh, um, uh, 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 encircling barrier. uh, Oh, I haven't uh, seen it yet. um, it's actually kind of cool. They they 
um, they have spikes now on the floor that show up on is this... objects that are inside of your of, of your of your. Oh, boundary. this is the so this is guardian, not stationary guardian. guardian. This is room scale guardian. Yeah. This is room scale, yeah, room scale guardian. Uh, um, and you and if there's like a table on the inside of your guardian, it'll show you that in in spikes, which is actually kind of helpful because you, you can tell where things are that you've like laid down that are going to, you know, that are going to mess with you and break you up. Uh, pro tip on, uh, on playing, uh, um, games that are, that, that, that have got a lot of, uh, a lot of like arm movement and head movement and stuff is go into, um, settings, uh, and drop the sensitivity of the guardian, uh, stuff. Oh. uh um, because, so it doesn't flash um, on you. If you put your hand through it, mm -hmm. it's gonna it'll it, you'll see the net, right? Mm -hmm. But the problem is that um, uh, at default, if you even move towards the net a little bit, it'll start showing the net. And if you're doing something like Beat Saber or uh, um, uh, or any of these other you know uh, things where you you have to kind of focus on shit coming at you, uh, it, it 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 totally like blocks you out. Yeah. So um, it, or at least for me. It, 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 it messes me up and I, 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 I break it. <laughs> Pro tip. Um, yeah. So Eric, Eric had mentioned this in the chat and I actually had it queued up to talk about. So we got some HMD, a mm -hmm. little bit of HMD news, man. Are we going to go 90 minutes without a guest? Impossible. Um, so I apologize for the big <laughs> obnoxious ad at the top of this page, but it does not go away. Um, probably for reasons uh, like this where I'm live streaming their page. How come I have, Oh man, look at you. In the of the <laughs> oh, day. I hit the, I hit the old, I hit the old, we have a guest, uh, there go. <laughs> via, sorry, maybe I won't be a live streamer anytime soon. Um, so yeah, Google, Google. So North, so there was, um, so actually Intel on this Intel bought this tech a few years ago. Um, and, and then, um, North. Well, they was, tried their own thing, right? They had bought no. They had bought this company. I want to say it was out of BC, Canada. It was like a heads-up display, kind of like realware, like you know, like a the whole Google Glass postage stamp floating in your periphery type of thing. And um, was it called Vaunt? I want to say. And um, anyway, they 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 offloaded it. And um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Steve. Sorry, sorry. That was when you were a guest last week. Our was that just last week? Jeez. No, by the, by the way, week. two weeks ago. By the way, if you've if yeah. you've not seen uh uh if you've not checked out Stuck on an Island and seen our interview with Steven, please watch it. I know it's long, but he's got so much he's working on and so many cool things he's doing. Please watch it. I, I, had a, I had a problem with Steven. He didn't let me talk enough. Yeah, he's kind of I mean, he's mean. He's not a nice person, <laughs> but he's very talented. <laughs> Just kidding, Stephen. We love you. Um, the so yeah, so North, so Google acquired North, and um, North is kind of like the company that's always been pointed to as like, oh, these are the smart glasses anyone would wear because they're fashionable and they're, you know, oh, that ad went away. Nice. Um, I guess we gave them enough exposure with our uh, ten plus viewers. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> they got acquired by Google, which is interesting. I'm I, I, quite honestly, I'm less interested. I've never been that excited by the non 3d AR stuff. Um, I, for better, or for worse, it's my bias. I've seen 3d content floating in the room and that's what I want. So, yeah. um, but you know, um, there were some rumors and some hearsay that maybe they have a little bit more up their sleeve than just the like notification hovering over your eyebrow you know, thing. Paul, Paul, we got, we, we, we got wrecked by, by magic leap because we, in a lot of ways. Possible, yes. <laughs> you know, oh, yes. I mean, in, in many ways we were wrecked <laughs> by magic leap, but, 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 uh, um, you know, like, like the, the tech was, and still is phenomenal, you know? Uh, um, and, and, and we saw what was possible when we looked through the big bench aka the beast or whatever you yes know? It's like, it's like like that stuff is like not a lot of people on the planet have seen that and uh um especially the the the, the big bench stuff yeah and, i mean you know, we we talked a lot about that i don't remember which up probably a couple episodes <clears throat> i think with graham 
in maybe our earlier episodes, I think we gave our backstory on the Magic Leap thing. Like, yeah. So, um, if you're not a subscriber and you've not already liked this video, I don't know what you're doing in your life, but you're probably sitting at home quarantined and you should probably watch a lot of our old episodes. We don't really cover the news that often, so it's not like it's out of date. It's all really good stuff. And that's my plug for the day. And um, it's not really a super visual uh, um, podcast, so you really you could just go to sleep listening to the sound of our voices. Yes. Know? Yeah, our dulcet yeah. tones. Um, yeah. So, uh, again, apologize for the uh, – apparently this is a thing now, these upper third ads by uh, Mashable and TechCrunch. Um, but, uh, another little HMD news, uh, it, I don't know. I kind of feel like about this, like I do the, my little rant about the contact lenses thing, uh, right. fa Facebook research, let's be clear. Facebook research, um, showed more of a, of a project, not a product that they're working on. And I mean, I, I will admit I didn't have a lot of time to dig deep into it, but it's basically using optics like what Magic Leap or HoloLens use, these refractive thin optics for a VR pair of glasses. So while this looks like a pair of glasses, it's actually a, which I don't, how does that work with like light leaks and like, I mean, like there's so many questions. <laughs> okay. I, all this, all this does is make you look like a crazy person with black glasses. Right. Yeah. Because like if you have You're, an HMD on your head, then people are like, oh, just, that guy's in VR yes. and, and you know, let's laugh at him. But now it's like, no, I can't tell if you're in VR or not. It's like that that that, that game we used to play in Santa Cruz when someone was walking down the street with a Bluetooth headset. Yeah. And they're talking to themselves. And you're like, was that Bluetooth or crazy? Yeah. Like you I can't tell which one. Right? I get it. We don't we, we want to make the shoebox on our face as small and comfortable as possible. But nobody's trying to like walk around, first of all, in VR, or right. if if they're in their if they're in their home or office in VR, they're not trying to pretend like they're wearing a pair of glasses. So, I'm I'm sure there's all kinds of speculation about oh, but this could be a pair of AR and VR, and like what if those were shutters that like where'd you go? You disappeared. Oh. Uh, no, so, I, I, I because I just saw Anastasia see it. I just showed up. You know. Oh but, yeah. There. Yeah. yeah so i don't know a lot of people again it's like the contact lens thing where i'm like okay uh you know i mean the other part of this too like just like with my contact lens rant where it's like how is it powered how do you handle thermals like all this stuff by the way this well, what this you just said was light leaks which is huge because i only have like on the on the quest i have this little tiny oh i hate that slot of, of, of I'm going to put some weather stripping in there. <laughs> and, and I have a relatively large nose and it still comes up underneath. Yeah. There. I hate and, that. Uh, I mean, it's good for when you need to drink a beer while in VR, but uh, or if someone texts you and you're like, yeah, it breaks, it does break know? immersion. I'm going to put some like, like Lowe's window weather stripping under there. Um, but you know, they even, they do point out like, okay, cool. Let's say these are exactly what everybody thinks they are, which by the way, they're not, they're a research prototype. This is not the compute. <laughs> this is not the battery. This is not like, uh, like this thing is this thing to if you want to actually see content through this, you're going to be you're going to have an umbilical to a Linux desktop that <laughs> yeah, like you're, you're holding it like this. Yeah. You're like, yeah. Right. Yeah. You're not walking. You're not walking around with these on. You're not walking around with these on. But anyway, I had to I, I just. I gotta throw shade once in a while when when the when the when XR Twitter goes nuts over like oh my god face, Facebook released these like really thin compact glasses I I gotta I gotta be right. the cur curmudgeon <laughs> but anyway um, but <laughs> wait let me check the chat real quick um, oh yeah um, I do need an app blocker eh. Uh, yes, Snap really fumbled with their uh, Juneteenth thing, but unfortunately that passed or we would have covered it. Yeah. Oh, Anastasia was like, oh, yeah, the, yeah, that's – well, Anastasia, that's the other problem. That was my big rant about the contact lens thing because, like, they showed this – this you know, ugh, I can't even remember off the top of my head. I'm almost done with this heavy hitter beer, by the way. Oh, and, uh, hey, look, Paul is in uh, his, his more kind of, like, hardcore uh, camera view now. 
I like that one better. I like the, that that one. That no. one shows you what? down in the murder basement. No, and nobody like, can see that. You're no, <laughs> no. Oh, the, the only one that can. Yeah, see that's it? on Skype. Uh, oh god damn it! Yeah, uh, switch cameras. Maybe you're on your heavy hitter beer as well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Anastasia, that is the other problem. Is like the press will pick this up and be like. AR contact lenses are here. AR or VR VR that looks like sunglasses right. is here. And like, that's what we're here for to be the crabby <laughs> salty people that well, know what BS. Some of this stuff is. Well, because it also makes it harder for all of us in XR to talk to clients in a way that, that, that is realistic. Yeah, oh my like, God. Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I want, yeah, I, I, I want people to walk into the room with nothing on their heads and be able to see all of this stuff flying around and yeah. be able to touch it. And, you know, it's like, no, this is this isn't a thing yet, you know? Yeah, it's uh yeah. I mean, I've got a whole I posted a thing on Twitter about this project that Spencer and I are working on where I'm having it. It's a very cumbersome project but it's a very reasonable set of requirements. And I was kind of bitching about it because it's a part of the problem with the, the current state of mobile AR and building real apps, real consumer scale apps on mobile AR. And I had all <laughs> these video, people that video you sent to me about uh, how you explain it to me. The guy who's like on the whiteboard. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> <Link> uh, that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's see. I'm catching up on the chat real quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The flutter, the flutter project, Eric. Well, the thing about that is I will, I will, since I'm, we're well into this now, I, I'm, we are working on a project and, and I will state the requirements from a, a customer perspective, not a consumer okay. perspective. Ar artists strap in. We're going to go. We're no, gonna no, 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 no. I'm not going to, we're going deep. Geek. No, no, no. Okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about the problems with the project. I'm just going to, we, we will save that for another episode because I think that could be a whole episode. The customer, yeah, the customer wants to build a commercially ready mobile app using modern mobile app frameworks, which are usually cross-platform, iOS and Android. Um, they can use ubiquitous talent to build the, the user interface. And, but they want an AR mode or an AR component within this mobile, it's a mobile app first with a pieces of AR functionality, which honestly, I think is how a lot of people should be thinking about their applications in the short term. And that it's sounds insane like that this isn't easier. It is not easy. And so yeah. basically, like I said, I will not go in the weeds, I promise, but we are embedding. No, you're going to go in. I, no, I, I'm I, I'm I'm not. no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No. Because what I want to talk about on this one is everybody's response, which was we're embedding Unity in a mobile app framework, a very popular mobile app framework called Flutter, which is put out by Google. So Facebook has React Native. Google has Flutter. These are cross-platform mobile app frameworks for people to build robust mobile apps without a lot of investment, without a lot of work, cross-platform. And we embed Unity in it so we can get Unity's investment in making AR work across AR core and AR kit where we only have to build the content once and it works on both. And, uh, our, our, our team of artists, including Spencer have a familiar workflow to build high quality artwork using the unity workflow. Very, all sounds totally rational and reasonable. It is a nightmare <laughs> to get this project up and running. It works. I got it. It works. We've got it, but it is a pain in the ass. And so I was like venting on Twitter about it. And I was like, it's a nightmare, but it works. And I had so many people be like, why don't you just use web XR and web AR? Or I had people go just use unity as a library. They came out with that later last year. And like it, it, it reminded me that people don't realize the, the, the requirements for deploying a production app at scale to consumer is so much more than the proof of concept. So yeah. like it's back to this, you know, these research projects and these like, the, these are great cutting edge, <clears throat> inspiring futurism type, pro the, the, the AR contact lenses, the Facebook glasses, 
great. You know, it's, it's, it'll come eventually. But if you want to build something today in a market that exists today, um, oh, it's kind of, it's a mess. Today. It's a mess. Right. And so, yeah. so yeah, for reasons why we talked about earlier, web AR, um, for an Android, by the way, web is not, I can't ask a consumer to install the Firefox web XR viewer on their phone to open this piece of experience in a no. mobile app. And it's not a requirement of the customer. And so, and then yes, unity now lets you build as a library. Um, they just released that late last year and, um, I could, again, that's a whole other episode. I'm, I'm not gonna do it. But anyway, my, my point is, is there's, I, I vented out on Twitter about this. You're doing this. a really good job of not going into the I'm not going in the weeds. I, I appreciate that. But, but I, the, the point is like, I had so many people just like be like, you're kind of bit like you're, you're kind of being a crybaby. Like you can do all this, you can do this with WebXR. Why unity does. And I was like, no, you don't like. I am in this. I'm on the front lines. I'm trying to make this stuff ship. This stuff does not work the way the right. documentation says it works. The way the you know the the whatever the press release or the blog post says that it works, it does not work that way, and is a nightmare. It's a pain in the ass. So right. anyway, I'm not gonna. We will. We are gonna. We're gonna go into that project. I'll show you all the crazy shit I've had to do to get that working. Um, oh man. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. The other thing, sorry, I've had this screen up the whole time. I've been ranting, but um, we had a. So, by the way, we have a Discord. That was, uh, good. That was a good rant, dude. That was great. <laughs> felt felt good. I don't know if anybody else appreciated it, but I did. I'm gonna have a little sip. So we have a Discord. It's uh, chat.xrtalk.net. We'll take you straight to it. It's not that noisy. I'm in a bunch of other Discords that are just super noisy. These are all good people. We're all just helping each other out sharing interesting yeah. stuff and we got a new we had a new person in the community i think in the past week or so he goes by i'm gonna say it's or they i don't i don't know who it is um they go by um it's pronounced or it's spelled sh4man so i'm gonna say shaman in leet speak and um they shared this project uh which i thought was cool which if you've heard of project north star so project north star um uh so so uh leap motion form formerly known as Leap Motion, um, developed an open source AR headset called Project North Star. And uh, it was powered by Leap Motion. Um, you know, you could 3D print the parts and you could build your own. And there's actually someone else in our Discord, uh, Noah, I wanna say, who sells all the parts pre-printed so you can build your own Project North Star. And um, it's a way to get like a wide field of view kind of homebrew AR headset to work with. And, um, right. and so I've looked into it before and, um, like to put all the parts together. It, I mean, it's an investment. You're in a, you're, you're several hundred dollars in and you got to put it all together and you got to calibrate it. Like you will learn why it costs magically a couple billion dollars to make something at scale, like, you know, uh, uh, like you'll learn all the, the pain points with that stuff, but yeah. it, it's a hobby project. Like, yeah, like I don't think it makes me cranking these out very soon, but the Triton project I thought was interesting, which is they admit that this is inspired by the North star concept, but they've really streamlined it. It's still powered by a leap motion sensor. Um, and you can order the parts and kind of put it all together yourself. Um, but it's not a phone. You're not slipping a phone in. You actually buy a, I think it's a 4k display. Um, and, and, uh, Oh, sorry if people are getting blasted with that. Um, but yeah, it, it's a, it's a homebrew AR headset that I think is a little bit nicer than project North star as far as like at least form factor. Um, so I just want to shout that out. That was something we learned. Oh, here you go. Here's a perfect comparison. Um, yeah, we learned about this through our little community. Uh, so if you go to uh, leap27.com, uh, you can see it. I don't know why Leap is in all of these AR companies' names, but it is what it is. Um, but we will link this in the show notes. So that was another thing I want to share in kind of the HMD news. Um, yeah, and he's uh, yeah, Shaman's been great. Shaman's been contributing uh, in the Discord in the Discord with all kinds of stuff. Um, Yes, it's and it, uh, Eric, it, I promise I will open up my Magic Leap ML1. Uh, I actually I, I suggested that today today we we unbox the ML1 because it's still boxed. 
Uh, um, but kind of like, you know, uh, past now. I mean, you know, like. <laughs> tell it. Well, hold on. Tell the, tell the story real quick. We got a few more minutes. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, 2017, I left Magic Leap. And uh, when did you um, join Magic Leap? <clears throat> 20 whenever you did with 2014 early early 20 january 2014 april 2014 yeah right it employee was, number we 57 yeah under 60 like okay okay just yeah. want to set some um, context okay <laughs> and uh i think that you and i were doing a uh, contract for them uh for six months before yes uh um so but uh um you know, I left in 2017, and I asked Roni, uh, um, you know, hey, can I can I can I get an ML one? You know, uh, when they come out, and uh, and I, I I you know, yeah, sure, you know, and and, and I, I never really quite got uh, any answers back. I, I I talked a couple times to a couple of the people in uh, in in uh, in the dev areas and the customer support areas, and you know, they're like, oh, sure, you know, and I I went to LeapCon. And, uh, and I saw Roni there. I was like, "Hey, can I get one of those? Like, I can get one." So that so, was uh, that was uh, October 2018. Yeah, 2018, right? And so, uh, um, and so, like in uh, January, February this year, uh, um, just as we were all about to be destroyed by COVID, um, I uh, I wrote to uh, the, the developers pro- program, and I was like, uh, you know help you guys figure things out and uh you know employee number 57 and uh um <laughs> can i get one and uh and, and i got a response back you know, yes yes it's on its way and then nothing happened nothing happened nothing <laughs> happened and then the you know whole layoff happened and all of the uh all the you know the, the sadness uh, occurred the sadness and, happened and uh, the sadness occurred and 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 then um <laughs> And just like, like what a week ago, uh, I I get this package on my doorstep. <laughs> like holy shit, I got one! I finally got one. And you know, I've actually <laughs> the first time the the first time that I I, I put a, uh, a an ML one a production ML one, not you know because I, I put a ton of I put a I never saw the PEQ. I put, I put a ton of PEQs on my head when I was working there, but I never actually got a production one on my head and so the first time was down in paul's basement and i was <laughs> like you know using greg broadmore's uh rocket ships to like crash them into paul's head as he's like you know working and stuff and what's really wonderful actually paul about uh um, about the magic leap uh um product is that i can crash things into your head and fuck with you in my own head and it doesn't bother you from coding you can continue to code and I can just like explode oh, yeah. things all over your head and stuff, and and it's it's amazing. Oh my yeah. god, Graham! Yeah. Graham said he had to buy one for full price. <laughs> Graham, <laughs> Graham, you no, you're no. the one that got us hired there. You were there longer than we were. <laughs> that is awful. That is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is not okay. Oh my god, I had no idea. Ugh. Anyway, so I have I have, I have an unopened Magic Leap on my uh, on my like you know next to the kitchen table there, and uh, and I will I will open it up and I will test Eric's uh, um, yeah uh, yeah uh, piece um, that he sent to me because I I want to do that yeah so so Eric is also in our Discord and um he he made a little uh, ML experience and he put it through um itch uh, I don't remember now um. And like that, so that's what we're here for. We we love this stuff. We've been working on this stuff forever. Um, we want to help people. We want to help more people get into it. I saw a really interesting Twitter thread. Um, I didn't plan to talk about this, but a uh, really interesting Twitter thread from Ali. Oh, Paul, sp- sp- split screen. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm, I'm feeling, you don't you don't be I'm focused. Feeling- I'm I'm too I'm too in focus. Uh, so Ali Hessen, <laughs> Ali Ali, who was a big part of the VR community, and I knew her from Twitter, and then she joined Magic Leap. And then I saw her at LeapCon and met her. That's where I met her in person. Um, she was posting earlier today about like how tough it is to get into the industry. And it's true. It's because it's an early industry and it's difficult for a lot of people. Like it's just not a well-established industry. There's not a lot. It's, it's almost right. like video games. It's like most people have a very weird story about how they got into it. And, um, and you know, I haven't chimed in on the thread yet. 
Um, but, but that's what we're here for is to help people figure this stuff out. And like, um, that's what I really like, you know, just like Steven, like, again, if you've not listened to episode 19 with Steven Chris, like, like just really good, just like yeah. what he's trying to do to just get a job and like, just like, and, and like the people don't know what to do with generalist or what, or they have these crazy requirements for an industry that like, we don't know yet enough about like what our requirements are for what people, we just need good, smart people that are curious and excited about doing this stuff. So anyway, come to our community. And, and anyone, anyone who's going to hire someone in, 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 in XR right now, pay them well mm. don't don't pay them crappy dollars because xr is not a crappy dollars kind of uh, uh um kind of experience uh, um uh, you know you you if you're working in xr you have knowledge that not very many people have and so you can tell people that you would like to make you know uh um this much money an hour or this much money a, a year or, you know i mean it's like i i think it's i think it's important for us to realize what our worth is as well well i mean yes and i would i would back that up with it's not it maybe you don't have a ton of knowledge in this industry because it it's still a new industry but like if you want to hire talented people just remember they could be doing other things and making money for those things. So, yeah. um, don't, don't like that. That's to me, that was one thing about the video game industry. I don't, I actually haven't been full time in video games in a while, but like the one thing that always kind of bummed me out is I felt like there was this air of, well, you really love making video games. So that's a part of your compensation. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and so like, yeah. I, I think, yeah. I think, I think, you know, as employers, I mean, that was what you should like, be happy to sleep on that. Couch. Right, 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 right. <laughs> uh, that's, that's one thing I'm proud about with like torch. Like I, I, I hope, I mean, you'd have to ask the employees honestly, but I feel like we paid at market or above market because we recognize that these people could be doing other things. And because they're doing right. something new and innovative, that's going to give them a new, <clears throat> we don't get a discount on their time for that. You know, like, no, we're paying you because right. we know you could be doing other things. And, you know, I mean, of course, we're also announcing Torch uh, is, is, you know, is not going to carry on through the end of the year. <laughs> but I don't care. You know, I mean, like, but right. but yeah, back to your point, like if if you are in a position where you have a budget and you recognize that there is a potential for this stuff. Just remember, people are people are not like don't take advantage of people because they want to work in this industry, reward no them way. because they no. want to work in this industry. Yeah. Well, and it'll pay you back in so many other ways. Absolutely. And, and they will, and, and they will, uh, um, if you take care of your employees, if you take care of your contractors, then they'll, they'll, they'll gather around you when things aren't good. Right. And, uh, and, and they'll, they'll be helpful to you. I, 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 I think it's really important to make sure that, everyone that you work with is on the same team in the same tribe, you know, like that, 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 that just feels like the way I need to do it with, you know, with my thing is like, it, everyone needs to be in the same tribe. You know, there is a, uh, there again, our, I, I love our little community. Um, apparently there's a project brewing where, uh, Oh, Michael Hill was talking about there. Somebody's using the ML one to control wheelchairs with eye tracking. <laughs> oh man, that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, please. So I, I think, you know, I'm, uh, I'm almost done with this, uh, 16% bottle of beer. And, yeah, uh, I, I, I just drank an entire bottle of Avalon Chardonnay. Oh, so, wow. Uh, Look at us. Yeah. Look at us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but I did have I'm one probably behind you in alcohol content, but <sighs> man, it was a good, it was a good, good day for it. Um, I did, real quick chat. Um, so about this show. So now I have a little bit more time to like, I, I do want to start experimenting with like putting a little more time into this show. And, um, uh, so one thing I've been kicking around, I've talked about it in the discord. I've been, I, in during this lockdown period, by the way, I've left the house 
if you if you don't count dog walks, I think we've left the house maybe five times since March. And I have been yeah. spending a lot of time on Twitch and playing Fortnite, honestly. And uh but I've been but I've been really intrigued by the Twitch uh ecosystem and the Twitch platform. And um we could multi broadcast this to YouTube and Twitch. Um I've even thought about if we started getting more into a Twitch oriented type of thing, we might actually do more than just once a week. Maybe we could do some impromptu work sessions over Twitch and stuff. So I just want to get, I just want to get the community's kind of feedback. Um, You don't have to answer now because I know there's a little bit of lag between what we're broadcasting in the chat, but let us know in the discord if you'd be interested in following us on Twitch. Cause I think that's something, Yeah. I mean, YouTube is fine and we will probably always at least keep, our conversations on YouTube. Um, but I'm, I'm really, I'm really interested in, in, um, like where people want to go. I, I really love in, involving the, the community and, and keeping us, uh, all kind of talking and helping each other, uh, as much. Yeah. David, uh, well, David, I mean, uh, if we did live work sessions, it'd be mostly me verbally abusing Spencer, but I think that could be entertaining. I think yeah. that's <laughs> okay. So, uh, quick question for our uh, our, our peanut gallery. Um, uh, I would love to get a 360 um, uh, view of my lab when I'm working, and also get one of Paul's lab when he's working. Like that would be kind of freaking cool to get two echo rectangular video feeds going yeah like, you know for that twitch so know, youtube youtube does th- i don't does youtube do live 360 twitch does not i have not seen any live 360 on twitch so steve's saying um that youtube has better chat interesting okay um these are all good things to know well like i said we don't have to figure it all out today i just want to throw that out yeah, there yeah. that like i got a little bit more time um, I'm thinking about at least echoing this broadcast to my personal Twitch just to see, you know, if, if, you know, if other people see it that way. Um, yep. but yeah, like I'm kind of interested in this idea of like, maybe us, maybe when we do these, um, Wednesday or whatever day kind of experiments, we could, cause you and I, when we, when we live jam on something, there's a lot of chatter and stuff. Right might be kind of interesting right. anyway just some ideas yeah. oh yeah we're I'm seeing in. we're seeing all kinds of stuff oh there's a there's a jeff ruger uh magic leap love fest jeff's saying hi to everyone in here uh oh, keith is here oh yeah yes, he is my keith Excellent. we should we should have you on the show i think i've said that before i've got by the way spencer and josh one more shout out to them they sent me eight bottles of this. So Mike Keith, <laughs> uh, so Mike Keith in the chat, he was, uh, he was one of the old school Weta magic leap people. So he, he's been there the entire time for Dr. G and boosters and everything. And, um, in the early days of us joining magic leap, the Weta team would come to Florida pretty frequently. By the way, that is a brutal trip, New Zealand yeah. to Fort Lauderdale. And, um, and Mike Keith was uh, I don't I don't know if this is still true Mike you can correct me but he was roommates with a an excellent brewery in New Zealand called Garage Project who did a lot of by the way look up uh, Garage Project beer like packaging because they did a lot of partners with uh, partnerships with Weta where Greg Broadmore did some labels and stuff anyway Mike Keith my man my 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 brother would mule over these beers probably illegally. Uh, to to Florida, <laughs> and the last time I saw him at LeapCon, I brought I brought him and um, our buddy Jimmy a bunch of Portland beers. So we got a little bit of a, a of a beer connection there. Um, yeah, thanks so much. I think I think you know it's time. I think this it's time to one. time to yeah. wrap it up. Thank yeah. again, thanks so much, everyone that kind of saw the torch stuff just before this went down and has been so kind to reach out. Um, I, I'm going to reply to everyone, um, over the next couple of days, please join our discord chat.xrtalk.net. We'll take you straight in there. Um, if you can't remember our YouTube channel, you can just go to watch.xrtalk.net. By the way, now that I have a little bit more time, I'm probably going to touch up our website a little bit. And if we do go to Twitch, probably watch.xrtalk.net will let you choose between if you want to go to 
YouTube or Twitch. So right. we're going to do some stuff. We're going to do some things. Yeah, I mean, we might we might even have a famous person on tomorrow or next time. Tomorrow, next week. famous. Next, next week. <laughs> oh my, these are all news. These are all news to me. <laughs> so thanks everyone uh, thanks so much for the chat the peanut gallery we love you uh, you always keep it interesting always good questions and um, I don't know if we'll be here next week but we'll be back soon yeah bye everybody All right. we love you